Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Chodha and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the truth behind the president's push for higher numbers with the stimulus, for a bigger stimulus package. His tweet yesterday, which is effectively a policy announcement because the president does issue policy announcements through Twitter. His tweet yesterday essentially saying, hey, let's get something done with higher numbers. In fact, I'll show you the tweet on your screen right now from the president yesterday, which did set off a series of events, a chain reaction of events in DC. So for that, I do believe the president deserves credit. The president said Democrats are heartless. They don't want to give stimulus payments to people who desperately need the money and whose fault it was not that the plague came in from China. Go for the much higher numbers, Republicans. It all comes back to the USA anyway. Now, I want my viewers and subscribers to know that for me, it's not about the red or the blue. It's about the red, white and blue. I'm not Democrat. I'm not Republican. I'm American. There are always two sides to every story. Democrats will say, hey, where have you been all this time when we passed the HEROES Act back in May? You know, why is it that you want to do this weeks before an election? We've been advocating for something much bigger and broader. In fact, I'll show you a chart on your screen which shows you the differences between the HEROES Act and the HEALS Act. So you get a sense of exactly how much money is at stake here, what the Democrats have pushed for, what the Republicans have pushed for, because there are two sides to every story. Now, speaking of two sides to every story, what I find very fascinating is the president in past interviews has said that he identifies as a Democrat. In fact, the president was a Democrat from 2001 all the way through 2009. The president has actually changed his political affiliations over the years. In fact, in 2001, the president changed his party affiliation from an independent because that's what he was prior to 2001 to being a Democrat. And then in 2009, the president changed his party affiliation back to Republican. After that, the president became an independent again in 2011. And then in 2012, uh, the president became a registered Republican. And also, the president has specifically said that the, the economy does better under the Democrats. I have covered that in a little bit more detail in another video, but I do think that clip is worth repeating here. So I'll show you that clip again, where the president says that the economy does better under the Democrats. And then I'll tell you what that has to do and how that links to the truth, the underlying truth beneath the stimulus negotiations. You want to stick around for that because this is not something that's being covered by the mainstream media, by the conservative media, definitely not something that's being covered by other channels. So you definitely want to stick around for that. But let's roll the tape and see what the president had to say about how the economy did under Democrats in the past. Let's roll the tape of an interview between the president and Wolf Blitzer on CNN back in 2004. Let's watch. I've been now around long, you know, I think of myself as a young guy, but I'm not so young anymore. And I've been around for a long time. And it just seems that the economy does better under the Democrats than the Republicans. Now, it shouldn't be that way. But if you go back, I mean, it just seems that the economy does better under the Democrats. Well, than it the certainly did well under Clinton. Well, but I wouldn't it. suggest it was so great under Jimmy Carter. That's true. That's if true. you remember That's the interest true. rates. No, I know. I know. It's uh, Jimmy Carter was not in the same thing. But certainly we had some very good economies under Democrats as well as Republicans. But we've had some pretty bad disaster under the Republicans. Now, here's why this conversation is so important. The president has shown a flexibility in his political affiliations over the years. And the president at this point in time is suggesting that, you know, the Democrats are heartless. They're not doing what's best for the economy and so on and so forth. But I want you to think about this for a second. Right now, the breakdown of the U.S. Senate is as follows. There are 53 Republicans right now in the U.S. Senate. There are 40 five Democrats in the U.S. Senate. So the U.S. Senate is Republican led. There's a Republican majority in the Senate. The Senate majority leader is Republican Mitch McConnell. So again, there are 53 Republicans. There are 45 Democrats in the Senate right now. Also, there are two independents. Now, the independents generally tend to caucus with the Democrats, but the Republicans form a majority in the Senate. Now, in the November election, in addition to the presidential election, there are 35 Senate seats up for re-election. 35 Senate seats up for re-election and 435 House seats. Now, it's widely predicted, it's widely projected that the Democrats will retain control of the House. That may or may not happen because, you know, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But I'm going to focus on the Senate for the purposes of this discussion. Out of the 35 Senate seats that are up for re-election, 23 seats that are up for re-election are Republican senators and 12 are Democratic senators. Now, here's why this is important. And I'll talk to you about the truth behind the president's decision to support higher numbers and what could likely be going on behind the scenes. Because again, this is something that you're not going to hear anywhere else. Now, imagine this for a second. Let's say hypothetically, uh, the, the Republicans lose the Senate 
as a result of the November 2020 election. A lot of Republican senators are extremely unpopular because they don't want to support further stimulus. And again, it's up to you to decide who you support. By the way, the Democrats also didn't support smaller stimulus. The Democrats want a much larger stimulus package. So there are two sides to the story. I have done another video, so you can check out that video on our channel that talks about the Republican senators that oppose further stimulus. I've also done another video that I do think my viewers and subscribers should pay close attention to because that video is a blueprint to the key Senate races in 2020. So I'd strongly recommend that you watch the other video, which is a blueprint to the key Senate races in 2020. Very important. But hypothetically, what happens if the Democrats flip the Senate? Now, I want you to think about this for a second. Let's assume one of two scenarios, okay? Scenario one, President Trump gets re-elected, but the, the Republicans lose the Senate. In other words, the Democrats now have a Senate majority and a House majority, in which case, by the way, uh, Mitch McConnell will no longer be the Senate majority leader. We can presumably assume Chuck Schumer will be the Senate majority leader. So if this happens and if President Trump gets reelected, think about it. It's going to be a Democratic House. It's going to be a Democratic Senate. Again, this is a hypothetical. This is a scenario. I'll present you with another scenario also. Now think about this. If the Democrats take control of the Senate and maintain control of the House, all the laws that go to the president's desk for signing, like I mentioned, will be democratic priorities. What's the president going to do over the next four years? Um, you know, besides signing laws that the Democrats present to him, is he just going to do press conferences for four years as our president? I mean, what's going to happen to policies? What's going to happen to priorities? What's going to happen to agendas? Is he simply just going to do press conferences or, or is the president just going to, you know, go overseas? and do photo ops with foreign leaders, you know, some of whom are highly unusual. Let's just let's just leave it at that. Is that all the president is going to do? And finally, what's the president going to do? Just sign executive orders for four years? I mean, you and I both know that executive orders, despite their intentions, despite uh, whatever is the underlying motivation between, between, uh, beneath the executive order, all executive, executive orders have a limited impact because the power of the purse rests with Congress. So the control of the House and the Senate is very crucial in that scenario one. Now, scenario two, if Joe Biden becomes president, we have a Democratic president, but if the Republicans retain control of the Senate, okay, and if the, if the, if the Democrats retain control of the House, we are looking at the same gridlock that we have right now, uh, which essentially will, will tie President Joe Biden's hands. This is assuming President, uh, the, the Vice President Joe Biden becomes president. So, we have a situation here which is uh, which is uh, which is uh, highly highly uh, partisan, and uh, and you know we'll wait and see what happens. But I just wanted to point out the truth behind the president's push for additional stimulus. The president is effectively laying down the gauntlet for Republican senators to say, "Hey, get behind me and let's do this," because there could be a talking point for the president, and this is the important part. There could be a talking point for the president that, "Hey, I did everything I could." You know, it's the Republican senators that didn't support me. And then could we have a future where you have a Republican president getting behind Democratic agendas in the future because his past affiliations have suggested that the president, uh, you know, is open to Democratic agendas, has been a registered Democrat and has said on tape that he feels the economy does better under the Democrats. Let me know what you think under the comment section below. Please comment and let me know what you think. Please also share this video with friends and family members. You know, um, they often say history repeats itself. Uh, the past is usually an indication of the future, but uh, we live in an environment where pretty much anything goes. I do want to know what you think about this piece of journalism on our channel. I do appreciate you watching and, uh, you know, it took a lot of uh, it took a lot of research to try and put the pieces together. Again, I do want you to comment below. I do want you to please share this video with friends and family and please let us know what you think. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. My name is Dr. Nitin Choda with Ignition Time. If you don't know anything about me, check out my introductory video on our channel. I have the fortune, the honor, the privilege of living the American dream and I want to help you reach your American dream. So give me the opportunity. Please click like, please subscribe, please enable notifications so you can get instant updates from our channel going forward. Now, you can follow us on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. We release exclusive content specifically for our Instagram community. You can also follow us on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is also ignition underscore time. That's ignition underscore time. We release breaking news and alerts on Twitter. You get them really fast on Twitter. Now, sometimes YouTube does not send out notifications. So make sure you bookmark youtube.com forward slash ignition time on your browser. 
that's youtube.com forward slash ignition time this way you can check out our videos and you won't miss a single video even if you don't get youtube notifications speaking of notifications get your cell phone out send a text message with the word ignition or with the word time to 70,000 that's 70000 and you'll get added to SMS alerts list and you can opt out at any time. Speaking of alerts, if you go to ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts, that's ignitiontime.com forward slash alerts, you can get on our email list and you can opt out of the emails at any time if you, if you so choose. Once again, thank you so much for watching our videos. Thank you so much for helping grow our community. Thank you so much. Please click like, please subscribe, please enable notifications. Please remember, we release videos at 2 p.m. East Coast time most days of the week. So make sure you subscribe so that you can get alerts from YouTube about those notifications. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you and we'll see you in the next video. Bye.